وهل أتاك حديث موسى إذ رأى نارا فقال لأهلهم كثوا إني آنست نارا لعني آتيكم منها بقبس أو أجد على النار هدى بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم وبعد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قال خذها ولا تخف سنعيدها سيرتها الأولى واضمم يدك إلى جناحك تخرج بيضاء من غير سوء آية أخرى لنريك من آياتنا الكبرى اذهب إلى فرعون إنه طغى صدق الله العظيم Yes, I know that uh, we left everyone in the air, you know, what hanging from the cliff. And that was that moment which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala discusses in the 20th verse of Surah Taha that Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wa salam dropped the staff. It turned into a snake. We spoke about three different words um, adopted by the Quran in expressing the nature of this uh, snake. Either Hayya, which is generic and embraces both, or Thu'banun, which is a large, huge, uh, you know, python, a big, thick, long snake, or Jannun, which refers to a swift, thin, slim snake. And uh, the reconciliation was that uh, it was huge in its size, but swift in its movement. And for the benefit of the scholars, uh, an added proof to support this reconciliation is that when Allah made reference to it as Jannun, Allah did not say it was Jan. Allah said, Ka'annaha Jannun. Ka'annaha Jannun. So Allah said, Fa'idha hiya thu'banun mubin. Suddenly it was a python. Suddenly it was a huge snake. Or suddenly it was a snake. But Allah said it was like a Jan. Allah didn't refer to it as an absolute John. Ka'annaha, kaf tashbi. So that also leads to the point that it had the swift movement of a slim snake, but huge in size. Uh, so your Musa alayhi salatu is standing and the staff has now turned into, uh, uh, you know, the snake. And obviously he's caught off guard. And like I mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had conferred different miracles upon different prophets. In fact, uh, uh, Alama Suyuti rahimahullah has this whole compilation speaking about the mu'jizat of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam and there are chapters and abwab and fusul that speak about so many different miracles of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Uh, in verse 21, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala addresses Musa alayhi salam, qala, Allah says, khudha, grab it, hold it, grasp it, khudha, O oh Musa, hold it, khudha. In Tafsir Uthmani, this is mentioned. In Tafsir Uthmani, this is mentioned that Musa alayhi salatu salam is like now apprehensive, nervous. He's like going forward and, and, and backing off and going forward and backing off. It's like hold it by the mouth, grab it. Qala, Allah says, khud, khudha, khudha. And some narrations in this mention in Tafsir Uthmani as well, he kind of takes a cloth and wraps his hand around and he's getting closer. And the angel says to him, but oh Musa, if Allah decides this to cause you harm, will the cloth harm you? Will the cloth prevent you or protect you in any way? And he's like, no, of course not. But Musa alayhi salam says in the end, I am a human, I am a human. So it's natural in that sense that, you know what, something that creates or instills a sense of fear that a human will have a sense of panic, anxiety, uneasiness. So Allah says, Khudha, Khud, it's Amar, grab it, grasp it, hold it. Wala takhaf, do not fear. And in another verse of the Quran, in min al aminin, you are safe, you are secured, you are in, in great safety, there's nothing to fear. Qala Allah said, Khudha, hold it, wala takhaf, do not fear. Sanu'iduha siratahal al-ula, and that is the 21st verse of Surah Ta Taha. We will return it back to its original form. In other words, it was a staff. We converted it into a serpent. Grab it and we will return it back to its original form. Its original form. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam then masters the courage and he holds on to it. 
The other wisdom that the scholars have given as well is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, displayed this miracle to Musa in, you know, before dispatching him to Fir'aun so that he understands it, he's confident about it. And when he comes before Pharaoh, now he has absolute conviction and calmness about the nature of this miracle. So now when he's going to drop the staff, Pharaoh is going to go into panic and those around him, but not Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, because Allah had rehearsed the miracle with him. Allah had explained the miracle. He had understood the dynamics of the miracle. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam picks it up. Uh, we will return it back to its original form and precisely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then returned it to its original form and now it became a staff, it became a stick, it became a support structure for Sayyidina Musa as he always had it and you know he benefited from it uh, as mentioned in the previous verses so that was the one miracle conferred upon Musa alayhi salatu wasalam then the next miracle and that is in the 22nd verse of uh, surah Taha Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says وَضْمُمْ يَدَكَ إِلَى جَنَاحِكْ تَخْرُجْ بَيْضَى مِنْ غَيْرِ سُوْ آيَةً أُخْرَى and thrust your right hand in your left armpit so that's your right hand of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. Thrust, place your right hand. Wadmum, dhamma yadhummu. Thrust your right hand. Wadmum yadaka ila janah. So janah literally refers to like for a bird, the wings or the forelimb of an animal. And here it refers to the arm of Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So take your right hand, your right hand. Wadmum yadaka ila janah. Place it in your left armpit. Place it in your left armpit. You know, I just have a reflection here that the noble companions speak about the purity and the hygiene of the Prophet ﷺ. And they said, obviously, we had seen his external appearance and his purity and his cleanliness and his beauty, etc., etc. But then there was the occasion of Salatul Istisqa, in which we ask Allah for rain. And in Salatul Istisqa, amongst the unique nature of this prayer is that we take the children out, we take the elderly out, and we take the animals out for this prayer as well. And we kind of present them, present them before we engage in prayer uh, in surah nuh in the 29 jews sayyidina nuh told his people that seek repentance from allah and the reason of bringing the young and the old, the weak and the feeble is that these are the innocent categories that are also being deprived of rain because of our sins. So, oh Allah, we ask you to shower us with rain, uh, you know, through their medium and their intercession. A person comes begging to you, you might decline. But that same person, if he or she presents a baby, it kind of melts your heart because this is an innocent child that is on the receiving end because of whatever crisis there is. So the companions say when the Prophet ﷺ made dua for istisqa, he raised his hands, he raised his hands, yura bayadhu ibi tayhi, yura bayadhu ibi tayhi. He said that's the time it became apparent to us the brightness and the purity and the cleanliness uh, of his, his blessed armpits. So every aspect of the Messenger ﷺ was clean and pure. And we've been taught Ashratum min al fitra that 10 things form the basic nature of a person and is in the teachings of the Messenger ﷺ. And that is, of course, to keep one's armpits clean as well. So coming to the second miracle, verse 22 of Surah Taha, thrust your right hand under your left armpit. Wadmum yadak ila janahi. So I told you janah could refer to the four limb of an animal or the wing of a bird. Uh, Allah refers to the malaika with wings that Allah has created the malaika. Uli ajniha, the opening verses of Surah Fatir in the 22nd Jews. Uli ajniha, they have wings. Mathna wa thalath wa thulatha wa ruba. Two, three, four. So there's a word janah, the plural of which is ajniha. And then there's a word junah with a dhamma on the jim. Uh, uh, on the gym, that's a separate meaning. That means like sin or wrong or harm. Fala junaha alayhi. Fala junaha. Anyway, Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam takes his right hand, places it in his left arm, and what does Allah say? Takhruj bayda. It will come out bright. Bright according to the tafsir of Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu ka shu'a is shamsi. Like the rays and the brilliance of the sun. So no person would able to look at this hand. Your gaze will be dazzled. 
your eyes will be dazzled. So this is how bright it is. And this is another miracle that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had endowed, blessed and favored Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam with. Min ghayri su, without any form of illness or disease. Sometimes a person could have a condition, a skin condition, a skin disorder. A person could have leprosy. A person could have some other condition where a portion of the body might also be, uh, you know, more, more, more brighter than the other vertigo or some other condition a person might have, which also has a sense of brightness compared to the general uh, complexion of his body. But that's uh, in a context of a, a condition or a skin disorder. And we ask Allah to grant shifa and afia and ease to anyone and everyone who has any skin disorder or physical disorder or mental disorder or anyone who has any form of um, impairment in any form uh, or, or, or sort. May Allah grant ease and afia. So here Allah refutes it. This brightness of your arm, greater and more brighter than the rest of your body, is not going to be a disorder of the skin. It's not going to be an illness or a malady or disease. It's going to be a sign of nur and goodness and greatness and a miracle. Ayatan ukhra. And this is the second miracle. This is the second miracle. So we've now equipped you, we've armed you, we've given you two miracles. We've given you two miracles. And as I mentioned, that these miracles are not the object of prophethood. The object of prophethood is to connect the creation with the creator. وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ وَذَكِّرْهُمْ بِأَيَّامِ اللَّهِ And remind them, ayam has different meanings here. One is the bounties of the Almighty. Remind them of the bounties of the Almighty so that the creation can become compliant and, and obliged to the order of Allah. And that is why also the scholars tell us that when we see a pious person, uh, we shouldn't be driven to examine his piety by the performance of a supernatural uh, thing. Because that is not a, that, that is, that, that does happen. Karamatul awliya haqqun. This is a chapter that we speak about and it is established and it happens and it is, you know, supported through so many athar that the pious um, also perform uh, supernatural things. But it's not a prerequisite of piety. The, the real basis of piety is that the person is obeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is what will determine his nobility and piety. And sometimes, occasionally, Allah blesses certain pious people and they perform certain, uh, you know, supernatural things and at times not. But the basis, the foundation is obedience and compliance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. قَالَ يَا مَرْيَمُ أَنَّا لَكِ هَذَا قَالَتْ هُوَ مِنْ عِنْدِ اللَّهِ Maryam رضي الله عنها, she was not a prophet. Uh, she was a pious, chosen, selected servant of Allah. She was eating off-season fruit, off-season fruit. This was a miracle upon uh, Sayyidatina Maryam radiallahu anha. So ayatan ukhra, this is another sign. This is another sign. You now have these two signs and these two miracles. And لِنُرِيَّكَ مِنْ آيَاتِنَ الْكُبْرَى Verse number 23, we have demonstrated these miracles to you so that we may show you some of our many great ayat and signs. So these are two signs, O Musa, that we have given you now. And uh, this is part, min tab'eeth, tab'eeth, some portion, ayat, the plural of the word ayatun, kubra, the great signs. So Musa alayhi salatu wasalam now has this uh, hand, yada bayda, as it's referred to, yada bayda, and the asa, which is the miracle given to him by the Almighty. And Allah then says to him, Allah then says to him, idhab ila fir'aun. Now, you might be wondering, he left his wife there. He left his wife and he said, wait, I'm just going there. I sense probably there's someone there or there might be a light or there might be some guidance. And then as he came up there, hang on. You know what? The discussion just went in a complete different direction. It went in a complete different direction with no uh, mention of him returning, meeting his spouse and the developments that followed thereon. The scholars say all those things tie up naturally. And the fact that Allah did not highlight that is not connected to our guidance. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala communicates and conveys to us the aspects of the tale and the narrative in which there is meaning, reflection and inspiration for us. And abhimu ma abhamahullah, leave vague and ambiguous what Allah has left unclear and vague. 
And Allah has left it vague, not because Allah doesn't know. Well, Iyadu Billah, Allah knows everything. Allah has left it vague because in that there is no there is no point of reflection for us. But what Allah has discussed, it's brimming with reflection. So it would be very tragic and sad and ironical if we omit the focus of what Allah has discussed in the Quran and we preoccupy ourselves and concern ourselves by other aspects of the tale regarding which the Quran has not expounded upon. So there's nothing wrong to follow up the tale and the narrative and understand the other related things, but the primary object needs to be following the verses that Allah has spoken about. So Allah has equipped Musa alayhi salatu was salam. That's um, the 23rd verse in that Allah says, we've shown you some of our many miracles, uh, some of the many signs in the hub ila fir'auna innahu tagha first 24 allah then says to musa alayhi salatu was salam idhhab go ila fir'aun to pharaoh innahu tagha verily he has rebelled verily he has rebelled so musa alayhi salatu was salam has been sent as the nabi of the time equipped by the miracles that allah has given him and now dispatched and sent to pharaoh who is the tyrant ruler of the time. Pharaoh was a very, very arrogant person. What did he say? He said, So aswir, uh, you know, bracelets. Why doesn't he possess bracelets of gold? He was flexing his economic muscle. He was flexing his economic muscle. He said, Alaysa li mulku misra. I mean, don't you people see this is the verse of the 25th juz, Surah Zukhruf. Zukhruf means gold, gold plated. Um, and, and Allah speaks about his arrogance of his wealth in this uh, uh, chapter of the Quran. So he says that, uh, don't you see this empire of Egypt belongs to me? But is it not that the empire and the kingdom of Egypt is mine? And these rivers, they are flowing beneath me. Don't you people pause and reflect and realize? Am ana khayrun min hadha alladhi huwa maheen? Am I not, bal ana, in his context, am I not more superior to this person? Wal iyadu billah, wal iyadu billah. The word Pharaoh used was maheen, meaning someone who is disgraced and humbled. Wala yakadu yubin, wala yakadu yubin. And he used derogatory expression against Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam. He can barely express himself. His speech is barely audible. It's hardly articulate. He is unable to express. He cannot even articulate himself. So, I mean, this is his arrogance. This is his pride that uh, he is not articulate. He doesn't have assets. I have wealth. I have assets. And, and, and uh, I am profound and I am articulate. So go to Pharaoh, innahu tagha, he has rebelled. Look at the clemency and the grace of the Almighty. You know, someone said it so beautifully that uh, Allah told Musa alayhi salam as the verses ahead will come that go to Fir'aun and be polite to him and say to him a gentle word. He said, Hada hil ya rab biman qala ana, rabbu, uh, uh, ana rabbukum al-a'la. Oh Allah, you are so kind, so merciful, so forbearing that you said to Musa, go to, the, go to Pharaoh and be polite and gentle in your speech to a person who claimed divinity. Someone who said, I'm the supreme being. Someone who said, I am the absolute being, right? I am the greatest of all lords. And he even said that, Ma urikum illa ma ara wa ma ahdikum illa sabil al-rashad. Ma urikum illa ma ara. I am only showing you what I can see. Wa ma ahdikum illa sabil al-rashad. And uh, Musa alayhi, and, and I am showing you the correct path. I am showing you the correct path. So anyway, Musa alayhi salatu was salam is now ready on the command of the Almighty and he's been dispatched to go to Pharaoh. But of course, there are certain challenges, hurdles, complexities for Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam to go and present the Dawud of the Almighty to Pharaoh. Amongst the challenges of Musa alayhi salatu was salam is a, he, uh, his speech, he has a stammer in his speech, he has a stammer in his speech. 
And the backdrop of that stammer is according to many of the narrations that when Musa alayhi salam was a little child in the palace of Pharaoh, in the palace of Pharaoh, uh, one day he grabbed onto the beard of Pharaoh. He grabbed onto the beard of Pharaoh. Musa alayhi salam as a child, he grabbed onto the beard and he, he pulled the beard of, of, of Pharaoh. So Pharaoh had this fear, this panic. Is this not the child that's going to topple my empire? And he said, this child is harsh and this child is nasty and we need to kill this child. So Asya, uh, the, the, the lawful wife of Pharaoh, the pious noble woman that the Hadith speaks about, uh, Asya bint Muzahim, she said, to, she said to Pharaoh that he's a child and he does not differentiate and this is nothing deliberate and this is nothing malicious. You're getting very personal about the whole thing. He's not trying to injure you or harm you or anything. It's a child. Like, you know what? Just have a break. Chill, relax. It's a child. Why are you getting so personal about the whole thing? And then to confirm that he was a child and the gesture that he did was nothing more than, than just the playfulness of a child, driven by the innocent nature of a child. So then fire was placed before him and some precious rubies, precious rubies. So expensive, exclusive, uh, uh, you know, pearls and diamonds and rubies. Now, obviously, someone who, who would understand would, would go for pearls and rubies because, you know, that has value. But as a child, you, you, the, the, the flame... Flame kind of looks more attractive and it has, you know, more glitter to it and it's got something unique to it. So Musa alayhi salatu was salam, uh, as a child, his hand advanced towards the flame. His hand advanced towards the flame uh, and, and, and some narrations say then he placed his finger on his tongue. He placed his finger on his tongue. So his finger burned slightly and obviously his tongue as well. And that then created an impairment in his speech, which resulted in a stammer and a stutter. And that, uh, you know, became a bit challenging for him when he would speak. Now, when a person has a, a, a stammer, it becomes more challenging when he needs to make a public address. Ask a person who probably just has a uh, you know, a phobia to, to do public speaking. He might be the most fluent of individuals in a casual sitting, in a general sitting. He could flow with confidence, but no sooner he needs to make a public address, then he's finding his tongue twisted. He's grappling to synchronize his words, to have rhythm in his speech. So here Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam had a stammer. As I mentioned, according to the narration, this was the origin. And some scholars say, some scholars say, that this is one of the reasons why Allah privileged him with the honor of conversing with him and conferring the title of Kaleem. So Sayyidina Musa alayhi salam, as a child, uh, you know, his, his life was riddled with challenges like every Nabi. But this encounter that he had in the palace of Pharaoh where uh, he burned his tongue and that created a stammer. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala compensated him, compensated him for this by privileging him with the honor of making him kaleem. Subhanallah. What a great honor. What a great honor. Like the ulama say that uh, the Prophet sallallahu had adopted Zayd radiallahu anhu and then the verses were revealed that your adopted son is no longer your son. So then the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa would refer to him as Zayd bin Haritha and not Zayd bin Muhammad. So for him, he enjoyed this honor and privilege of being attached to the Messenger Sallallahu name and then subsequently post the revelation of this ayah in Surah Ahzab in the 21st verse, then this name got detached. And the ulama say the compensation of this was that Zayd radiallahu is the only companion from all the Sahaba whose name has been explicitly mentioned in the Quran. So uh, uh, a host and hundreds of thousands of Sahaba have been referenced in different verses this refers to Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. Uh, this verse refers to Sayyidina Umar. This verse refers to Mus'ab ibn Umair radiallahu anhu. Min al-mu'mineen rijalun sadaqu ma'ahadu allaha alayhi. Faminhum man qadha nahbahu wa minhum man yantadhir. This refers to Sayyidina Mus'ab ibn Umair radiallahu anhu. And then in uh, Surah Al-Layl. Wa ma li ahadin indahu min ni'matin tujza illa btigha'a wajhi rabbihi al-a'la. The narration of Hakim. This refers to Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu. So anyway, this is one opinion given by scholars that this is the reason that Allah then blessed and endowed Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam with this privilege, this honor and this, uh, this great uh, you know, uh, uh, honor to communicate and converse with the Almighty. So this was one challenge that he had the stammer in his speech. The second challenge was 
that he grew up in the palace of Pharaoh. He grew up in the palace of Pharaoh. So in that way, there was a kind of favor of Pharaoh and kindness, if you were to call it, because it was not conscious again from Pharaoh. It was circumstantial. It was circumstantial. Circumstances compelled him by the overall plan of Allah. But given the nature and the arrogance of Pharaoh, he had a chip on his shoulder. Alam nurabbika fina walida wa labithta fina min umurika sinin wa fa'alta fa'alataka allati fa'alta wa anta min al-kafirin. In Surah Shu'ara, the chapter on poets in the 19 Jews, the discussion is there in great detail where Pharaoh is like, but didn't I raise you? But didn't you spend a great chunk of your life in my palace? And you know what you did and you're aware of what you did. So these were the kind of challenges that Sayyidina Musa had to contend with going back to face this person. So, you know, in order three people speak to me and I often in my humble way give advice that one is mastering the feel of oratory, one is having the luxury of language, one is having the confidence, one is uh, studying and researching your topic. But then at times, you know what, uh, it could be a, an awkward moment because that is where you schooled back in the years or your teachers are there or your seniors are there or, or, or there are other dynamics in that particular address of yours that somewhat uh, compromise your flow of thoughts or challenge your, your, your confidence of speech. So these were just some challenges to the backdrop of how Sayyidina Musa alayhi salatu was salam, uh, what he had to contend with before coming to Pharaoh. Anyway, idhhab ila fir'aun innahu tagha. Go to Pharaoh, verily he has rebelled. Look at the grace and the clemency of Allah. Look at the grace and the clemency and the kindness of Allah. If Allah were to punish any person without sending a reminder to him, it's perfectly within the right of the Almighty. The narration of Abu Dawud. If, if Allah were to issue a decree of destroying his entire creation, who can dare challenge Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? And if Allah were to punish every person proportionate to his wrong, there wouldn't be a living creature. But the kindness, the grace, the clemency, the mercy of Allah, go to him. Yes, in the 30th Juz, in Surah Nazi'at, Go to him and ask him, has he got any thoughts of changing to stop his arrogance? You know, I'm reminded of the incident I read of Malik bin Dinar and we'll wrap up on that note where a thief, an intruder came into his house. And he came to steal. But this was the house of the pious. There's books and there's a prayer mat and there's a mushaf. And what else are you going to find? So he looked and he didn't find anything. So Malik bin Dinar said, Lam tajid shay'am min dunya atargab fi shay'am min al-akhirah. Listen, you didn't find anything material. Are you interested in taking something spiritual? So he's like, okay, okay. Tawadda, perform wudu. Salli rak'atain, offer two units of prayer. So he offers two units of prayer. وَخَرَجَ مَالِكِ إِلَى الْمَسْجِدِ And Malik uh, bin Dinar then goes for salah. وَمَعَهُ الرَّجُلِ And with him is this intruder and thief that tags along. So Qila, people ask Malik, مَنْ هَذَا معك? Malik, who's this with you? Whenever you come for Fajr, there's nobody with you, but today you're accompanied by someone. So Malik bin Dinar said, جَاءَ يسرق فَسَرَقْنَاهُ He came to steal from us. We stole him. Wow. Look at that expression. He came to steal from us, but we stole him. He came to steal something material. We took him for his spiritual reformation. We leave it on that note. Allah has equipped Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. I've given you the backdrop, the challenges, the dynamics, the complexities with which Musa alayhi salam has to contend. We conclude on 20, verse 24. Musa alayhi salam is equipped. Now Allah has dispatched him. Let's see what follows from here and how he finally arrives at Pharaoh and presents the message of the Almighty to Pharaoh. May Allah make us true ambassadors of this deen.